This is uh, Canada Tortoise Capital with the daily debriefing for January 8th, 2018 for advanced swing course. Uh, taking a look at a couple of swing trades in progress. Uh, Caterpillar, just an update on this one. It's been uh, maybe the dominant um, course in the Dow. Um, the first position on the current cycle came out of a Z3 pinch and a cross to the upside of the signal line over the MACD histogram and, it, and after this pullback taking it out uh, some entry around 142 and three quarters with about a five six dollar stop uh, a long uninter in, uninterrupted run through Christmas and into the new year a pullback uh, a resumption and this is another uh, MACD histogram crossover the signal line to the upside, uh, triggering a second entry. That's a, a money management um, with from 142 to 159 is uh, 17 on a $6. So that's just about a 3R and a second entry here. Um, today was a big gap up and a follow through all the way. Uh, and so uh, I moved the trailing stop now up to a two-day low if we get any kind of favorable move to the upside uh, intraday I'm going to move that probably to the middle of this uh, of this candle so that I lock in this gain uh, this game this one is already at no lose uh, but I want to capture that that win right there so we're about six dollars away which is the same size as that risk <clears throat> Uh, U.S. Steel has had a similar uh, nice run. This was a Z3P breakout. Um, this was the Z3 line, uh, and it took it out here uh, with a stop below this uh, this swing low. So that's like looks like about uh, three dollars, about two dollars, uh, and that's been working. And you get a we probably could have had another entry in here when it broke the the ten. Probably late to get in on there, um, but waiting for the new year and then the second leg up, taking off this hump. So second position around 36 ish, and uh, four more days of gains. I've also moved this one up to a, a two-day low, so now the second position uh, is locked in. This is just part of the uh, conservative large caps, um, you know, industrials and basic materials have just been dominating. Uh, on a sector basis, uh, really for the last month. Um, so those are the lowest risk trades, but the um, aggressive stop management keeps that locked in. Uh, just shifting to an intraday one um, from our Euro team. Um, this is looking at the DAX on one minute. Um, Sonal identified a collapsing dragon. She had a long bias and didn't take this one, but when it uh, bottomed out here, you see the expanded C3 and closed the gap. Um, she gets a nice uh, re-entry here in the pocket. Uh, very nice capture. Um, a second entry and then a capture. I like this, uh, this snippet. Uh, this is all very nice. Uh, this is XLV. So this is the opposite of the uh, swings in the uh, long-term grinders up. So healthcare, we know from the weekend report, has just been... Uh, horrible. This is one where XLV, the sector spider, opened and then started collapsing right away. And as soon as it goes through uh, the RL270, and we get like a 1, 2, 3 um, short and a hybrid frog move of about, that's about 85.30 and 85.10. So it's about a 20 cent uh, hybrid frog box here. And this will often act as uh, a resistance area for the rest of the day. Uh, we end up bucking into this, bucking into this uh, uh, red Niagara, and then a one, two, three uh, cover when the um, MACD histogram comes back up and starts crossing the signal line. Um, in keeping with the uh, wanting to be short on the weak sector, uh, this is one where uh, it rolls over before it gets back to the Bollinger Band mean, and before it gets back to the RL270. And you can see the crossover uh, occurs right in here. This is a, an opportunity to get short again. Uh, we covered this one a little bit later on a one, two, three uh, 
as well, and on a 20 cent, uh, 20 cent initial risk, which is sort of standard for XLV, um, that's about a 1R. This is looks like about maybe one and a half, possibly two. Uh, here's one in XIV. This is uh, part of a turbo position that uh, XIV has just been dominating uh, on swings, and so we have a swing position then. Um, and this was a gap up, that initial 30-minute uh, sell-off, followed by a morning hook. And so this was a uh, hybrid frog off the bottom of about 60 cents. So enter, uh, and really, this, uh, this has stayed above the zero line most of the day. Um, and really just uh, letting it ride and putting a second position in when it comes out of the uh, Z2 uh, above the zero line and uh, end up cashing this one uh, around 144.50 shortly after uh, after this play. I think it came all the way back to 144 and then finished still up slightly for the day, but it was a big, uh, a big up day for XIV once more. So the swing narrative is fully in place. Uh, I want to shift to the uh, review of the daily report now. And let's see what we got here. Okay. Um, so let's come. So we're into the daily report for 8 January. Still bullish normal, still overbought on long term and short term. Um, the longer term trends compared to the 200 and the slope of the 50 are both green bullish. We remain overbought. We're still in risk on. The risk Z is still marching up. That's favorable for swings. Uh, we remain overbought. No signals for channeling and overreaction out of the primary indices. 10-day max pains remain the max pains, Intel, uh, Goldman, GE, Travelers, Disney, uh, a 5DD and the VIX. Uh, this causes me to think about um, making sh very sure that I'm not carrying excessive risk overnight on XIV because when that thing reverses, uh, a lot of times um, the pain is felt in the gap and so uh, my swing position is small on that one. And I'm using the turbo to uh, to hedge or to reinforce. We have uh, four auto framers, including Travelers, VIX, Win, and Intel. A couple favored trading symbols in there: Goldman and Travelers on channeling, Goldman and Verizon on triple screen. Very few mechanical systems firing right now because of the uh, grinding upward bull near all-time highs. Um, we have some good frog quality numbers. Firing here, Cisco, Walmart, Pfizer, Goldman. Uh, uh, Travelers uh, is in the single digits on RSI2. You can see Caterpillar just continues to dominate on the uh, on every time frame. Those are percentage returns uh, based on one day out to 12 months of return. Um, Boeing has been another one. I've just completely missed Boeing altogether because I've been fascinated with uh, Caterpillar. Um, uh, but Walmart is showing some good shape here as well. Uh, in the ETFs, again, very few um, mechanical signals. There's a 5DD here in the VIX. Um, and you can see XIV has been dominating. And that's that's why when the, the long-term trend is firing intraday, in my view, that is a low-risk uh, intraday uh, play. So I... Call that core and turbo metals and mining, and that's re that's really helping X uh, U.S. Steel work hard on that one. Um, Brazil and Latin America have been swings uh, that we identified last week, um, and just a little bit of pullback today. So you can see that they have um, their turnaround uh, has made them exceptional winners on the 10-day, and so that makes me think about um, uh, locking in those locking in those gains on those swings. They've even outperformed um, XIV, which has been dominating. I mean, they returned 8% and 7.5%, and the VIX has only returned 65 and 67 So catching those uh, really oversold uh, sectors at the bottom of their, uh, of their turn um, is another 
form of low risk. So I like the uh, swing trades that are nested in the extreme conditions of both um, relative strength winners and relative strength losers. I think uh, extreme results can come from both of those extreme conditions. So let's see if we can go take a look at um, ILF and EWZ and clean up the, um, the, um, the trailing stops on those. Stand by. All right, so we're looking at Latin America here. The um, signal to get long was when the uh, MACD histogram uh, crossed above the zero line. That was the signal. This is the mechanical entry when it took out the previous day's swing high. Used the previous swing low as the uh, risk, which was 50 cents. Um, this gets locked in to the money pretty quickly. Our initial uh, price target was down here, taking out the 10-day uh, um, regression line high. Um, so we knew this was a good position lock in here. and missed the opportunity to get a second position in. But now we've had um, a really nice run up, and today uh, was a, uh, a doji at the top that failed to make a new high. Uh, and so I've moved the stop up to the two-day low, and I'm prepared to lock in uh, a little bit more that if it takes out tomorrow's low, um, then I will uh, I'll, I'll move that up uh, if, it, if it opens inside uh, the range and starts failing, then this will accelerate and just capture some more of that. Um, and, I, and I think uh, Brazil's going to look similar uh, to this one as well. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to say if it hesitates and then takes off, this is where I will add a second position. Uh, because if this was the normal place to hesitate and it, and it, uh, and it doesn't, then, um, then we'll be okay. Uh, it could be another leg up. So I'm going to look for the next logical. Well, there's really, this is really going to be good. So yeah, if it gets above this resistance here, this looks like a really good entry. Uh, but again, this would be the natural place for it to fail. It failed here. It failed here. And so this, this um, locks, locks us in. Um, and I really almost feel that's too far away. I really want to get that up higher. We'll see how it opens tomorrow. Uh, this is our quick look, an update on uh, EWZ. Again, one of my favorite uh, intraday and swing targets. Uh, similar to ILF, uh, it came out of a, an extended uh, uh, downward bias when the signal line crosses the, the dotted line, the zero line, um, took out the high, so our entry is in here around 39.90. Um, uh, was about a kind of 40 to 38, about a dollar and a half of risk. Um, again, we get that nice excursion. Um, have a, a doji failed to make a new high, so I move my stop up to the two day low. And again, similar to ILF, if this starts to fail, then uh, I'm going to be accelerating that stop and try to capture like another 30, 40 cents, which would represent about a third of an R. Just if we look back further in time, where we picked up our negative bias in Brazil here, when the MACD histogram had been above the zero line and then crossed below. And so from this period uh, here, uh, we're, we're getting short and then covering here. This is that concern about the gaps at the end of long runs that you can get um, get smacked by the gaps. I mean, this was uh, an opportunity intraday to have captured uh, another really from 37.50 to almost 38.50, about a dollar, um, but still a nice swing. But you can see how much is left, and I want you to notice just how big the range bars, the real body of these candles are in Brazil. And that's what makes it such a nice swing trade is that it opens quite often near the extreme of the day and then just continues to go. So these kinds of days where you have enormous signal compared to noise make this an outstanding trading vehicle. Like this candle, those days, all of these days, like this day, brilliant. And followed by that day. So inside this chop where you have lots of volatility but no follow through direction, um, 
Brazil rewards you as an intraday uh, candidate. So that's a, that's a quick look um, at those two. And um, let's get back to the daily report. Again, so just as a reminder, that, that little diversion was triggered by this, the observation that on the 10-day basis, the 8 and the 7.5% gains in Brazil and Latin America really stand out. That's why they're green, because they're more than one standard deviation larger than the fellow members of this population, in the same way that these in the red, uh, the VIX, um, utilities, and real estate, uh, are in the red because they're more than one standard deviation worse than this population uh, average. Um, so that's a, a down and dirty way to look at um, uh, relative strength. On the pension stretch, uh, the most positive stretch is not surprising once more. Uh, Caterpillar at the top of the stack where it's been for a couple of months. Um, the indexes are stretched pretty well uh, in the SPY and the diamonds, but the uh, the traders vehicle here, the small caps, not really stretched at all. So there's, uh, there may be some weakness creeping in, um, and suggesting maybe this run is done. But what it really tells me is that the buying pressure is coming in with New Year money into the large caps of the S and P 500 and the Dow. And that's how I'm uh, interpreting that. The most negative, oops, excuse me, the most negative Z stretches. These are the, uh, the Z scores of things below their 30 period uh, Bollinger Band mean only um, utilities are exceptionally stretched uh, to the downside. Uh, and this, by the way, is what that negative stretch looks like. And, and I should just be shot for not having uh, caught this, talking about opportunities missed. This is where should have picked up the negative bias in utilities. And we've seen it, I just haven't been trading it because it's so hard to trade that intraday that's hard to do turbo. Uh, what a what an opportunity miss from 55 down to 51. Uh, now I'm interested in, in it on a deep um, deep value play. That this looks like a way to get some yield. And we've had uh, one, two, three legs down uh, and a big positive move at the bottom. Uh, I consider that to be a low risk trade. So Here's how I'm going to set that up for tomorrow. Uh, I'm ready to buy. Um, if it takes out the you know the daily high, I'm ready to buy it right here around 51.85 with about a 60 cent stop. signal date and then I'm looking at a potential target up here of um, call it 56 I think it gets to here first and the Bollinger Band mean so that's my price ladder of upside and then if it fails below 51.27 that's an auto short right away because then whatever this was is continuing to the downside. So that's how I'm going to frame that one um, in utilities. I call that pre-chicken. All right, let's get back to the report. Most expanded pinch boxes. Again, you can see why XLU, you saw how wide that river was, and Caterpillar was brilliant. Uh, so enough on that. The indexes themselves are not uh, widely uh, uh, spread out, although... Uh, the small caps are starting to get uh, significantly pinched, getting ready for a large move in either direction, perhaps. Uh, and then the most compressed pinch boxes, these are the ones that are setting up for the Z3P. And now Apple is joined by Johnson & Johnson and McDonald's uh, as super pinches. And that is that their Z score is less than minus one. And all four of the um, regression lines have been tightly pinched. So that's what Apple on the Z3 Super Pinch looks like. Uh, I would be willing to go short the two-day low with aiming for a target of down to 169. And I'd be willing to buy a breakout of the daily high, looking for it to have cleared this, and off it goes. Um, 
that would be my play in Apple. Uh, and then Johnson and Johnson. Again, a super pinch. Uh, I like the fact that it's a low, a higher low. I will buy 142 um, with a looking for an initial target of 144 with a uh, stop down here of about uh, 139.50, 139 even stop. Uh, I wouldn't think of getting short of this one. Um, no, I think I would get short here at 139. 50, so that'll be a stop and reverse, and then the downside targets would be 137.5, uh, and then closing this gap here at 134. Um, now the final super pinch here on McDonald's. I like that it's been riding the RL30 consistently. Pull back, nice pull back and held, pull back and held. So I, I would buy this one on any kind of momentum, up looking for the upside of 177, so $4 move, and see how long and strong that one has been. Uh, on the short side, I wouldn't think about getting short unless it violated the um, this collapsing dragon officially at 171. And it, um, I would rather see, uh, I, I think it'd be easier to find um, uh, shorts uh, with conviction. McDonald's has just been too too strong for too long. I mean, is that really something you want to short? I don't know. Not me. I'd rather find a weakness that was collapsing rather than betting against um, the most successful fast food restaurant in the world. Looks like almost a growth stock, doesn't it? You're talking a move from 120 to 175 in a, in less than a year. Nice. Uh, that's why we play swings. And these pullbacks in long, strong candidates, this stretch away from the RL270, followed by a resumption of 1, 2, 3. And notice where we get a long bias right here. What would that look like on that day? So you don't have to scan wide and far if you have a set of favorable symbols. This is what that looked like on that day. That pull back and then that's your signal to get long. Uh, it crossed to the upside and then crossed the zero line. There's your signal to get long at 157. And that call 158 with um, a five dollar risk, and that's a move from 158 to 173. That's fifteen dollars on a five dollar risk. That's what three R's look like, and that's assuming that you're not playing any resumptions. This is the most attractive one here. So there we are. If we had been in from this position way down here, in my view, the place to be. Um, protecting that 3R would be just under the Bollinger Band mean. I would accept a stop below the um, RL10. All right, so we're 25 minutes into it. That's good debrief. We'll catch you in the chat room. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.